What I've got here today is an engine off of a lawnmower. It's a Briggs motor. This is an older Briggs Quantum 4 horsepower with the carburetor that is not attached to the fuel tank. It's right underneath here. I've had some requests to do a carb repair on that. So because I don't have one on the lawnmower, I decided to just put the engine in my vise like that and basically just do a carburetor clean just so that you guys can see how to do it. Sometimes though, before removing the whole carburetor, what you can do is remove the bowl nut under here. Sometimes there'll be just water or dirt in there and just by cleaning that, it'll do the job. So then look in your bowl here, see if it's clean. Clean the outer edge of the bowl and just stick it back on. The O-ring is in place when you put the bowl back on. So sometimes just doing this, your mower will run after. Before putting the bowl nut back on, if there's dirt there, just clean that as well. Decide to remove the whole carburetor, start by removing the air filter assembly. It's all going to come out. Now you're going to need to remove the two 5 16 bolts here. And also this one over here. Now that's going to come off. Now you're going to need to go in and remove that 3 8 bolt over here and the one on the other side over there and remove the fuel line as well. Once you've got those out, pull the carb out like this. Now what you need to do is to disconnect this linkage here which is in the hole of the butterfly mechanism. So as you can see here, if you just twist the carb like this the linkage is going to come right out. The first thing you can do once you have your carb off is to remove the bowl nut here, which we previously removed. It'll be a lot easier to clean the carb this way. So this carb here is not too bad, but while we got it apart, we can fine clean it some more. Now I'll just remove the float, just pull the pin out, and then lift up the float, and the needle should come out. There it is. It's still good. Now what we really want to make sure that's super clean are the two jets inside here and this little hole inside here as well. So I'll spray with carb cleaner, let it sit for a while, then come back and clean it. Take off the bowl o-ring on the carb here so we don't soak that in carb cleaner. And then spray inside here and all over and let it sit for a while. If your carb bowl is really dirty inside, spray carb cleaner in there as well. I'm not going to in this case because it's fairly clean. The carb's been sitting for a while now, and I've got a wire that I'm going to run into one of the jets, the bigger one. And you should see the wire come out the other way. You should see the wire come out inside the carb. You can see it there. So you know that that's clean. Now the other small jet there, you're going to need a smaller wire for that. You can get a little wire like this from a twist tie or something like that. Or sometimes you buy stuff and it's wrapped with really small wire. And shove it as far as you can. And then rub it back and forth like this. And then rinse it out again with carb cleaner. Now the last jet we want to clean is this one here. And it's got to go right inside here. So if these holes are plugged, it's not going to run right. Now once you've cleaned that, you can remove the adjusting screw here, but count out the turns first. So one half, one turn, one and a half, one and three quarters. Then you'll know what to set it at once you put it back in. And that looks pretty clean. You can spray a carb cleaner inside the adjusting screw hole there as well. Now I'm just going to put it back on. I'm going to screw it in all the way and then count out a turn in three quarters, so half, one, one and a half, and a quarter. Now you can grab a fine wire brush like this and scrub all the insides here. Sometimes there's a bit of corrosion on here, or you can use your wire brush on your bench grinder. Now look inside the tube here. 
If you see any dirt on the threads here, make sure you spray that and get it all out. You can scrape it off with that little wire, the stronger one. And just repeat the process until it's fully clean. Now, depending on the problem you had with your carburetor, whether your machine wasn't running right or not starting or dying out, whatever, cleaning the holes should remedy that problem. Now, if your carburetor was pouring out gas out of here constantly, then you may need to replace the seat and the needle as well in the carburetor. So I'll show you how to do that. Now, if you don't have a problem with flooding, don't bother doing this. But if you do, you can use your Tecumseh tool or use a pick or a wire or a paper clip to go in and retrieve the needle seat, which is here. And if you get a new seat, make sure that you put the side with the groove facing down. So you want the smooth edge of the seat pointing up and just reinsert it. If you don't have that tool, you can use a small drill bit to push the seat back in. And usually on these, the needles are still good, but they'll come with the needle and the seat as a kit. Now the last thing to clean is the ball nut, and I'm just going to run that on my wire brush. Now that you've cleaned the whole carb, you can put it back together. Start by putting in the float and the needle. Put the needle into the tab of the float here, just like that. Next, grab your carburetor and insert it all together in one piece like that. Now line up the holes, insert your pin, make sure that the needle is still in its proper place. Also before you put your bowl on, check to make sure that it's not corroded on the edges here. If it's excessively corroded, replace it with a new bowl. Also, if the O-ring is cracked and broken or brittle, replace it so that it makes a tight seal when you put the bowl back on. Just insert the O-ring on the carb first. Now insert the bowl over. Doesn't matter which position the bowl's in. It's not like on the Tecumseh engines. Now insert the bowl nut back on. Make sure the little washer under the nut's good. If it's good, you can reuse it. Now the last thing, just tighten up the bowl nut and it's a half inch wrench. So at this point here, this carb is ready to be installed and I'll show you how to do that. Before you put the carburetor back on, make sure that the o-ring over here on the manifold is still good because if that's cracked or broken or missing, your machine won't run right. Now the first thing to do is to get the linkage over here into the hole on the butterfly mechanism here. Now it might be easier if you hold one end of the linkage with some pliers and insert it in like that and then move the carburetor up. So you can see that it's in there and once you put the carb in its place it's going to go just the way it's supposed to be. And there's the underside of the butterfly mechanism where you can see the linkage come through. Now you want to put the bolt on each side of the carb back Just snug them both on each side first and then tighten them on evenly so the carb goes on nice and even. Now just tighten everything up. So now put the carburetor air breather cover back on. Make sure that the hose here goes into the pipe under here. It's just for the crankcase pressure. Now just tighten these up. filter looks anything like this, replace it. I'm not going to because I'm just throwing this engine back in storage. So I'll just stick the filter in like this. This is the side up with the screw. Get it back into the notches at the bottom here, they match. Then just screw that back on. So it's basically all there is to these carbs. They're fairly simple. As you can see, there's not too much stuff to take off, so 
just make sure you clean all the jets really, really good, and you should be back uh, running. Thanks for watching.